So today we moved a really young leafcutter ant colony from the container that it traveled in into the container it's going to live in. And it's a very delicate process because the fungus is just as important a part of the colony as the ants are. And so moving the fungus is a little bit like moving really fragile sponge cake. So you have to be really delicate and use the proper tools. Workers of all sizes are always going to want to defend their nest. And so anytime there's a disturbance like what we were doing earlier, trying to move the colony from one place to another, they're going to respond in an offensive way. So it really helps to have a buddy so that you can have someone paying attention to the ants who are intent on biting you and being able to brush them off while you move them to a new enclosure. At the bottom of each new chamber that we've made for the ants to live in is a substrate called hydrostone. The cool thing about it is that it absorbs water so it can provide additional humidity for the fungus gardens, which helps the ants maintain them. And it also wicks away excess moisture just in case the conditions are too moist. So it acts as kind of a regulator for the environment inside the chamber. Leafcutter ants actually cut the leaves and bring back all those leaves to their colonies in order to use it as a substrate to grow the fungus on. And the fungus is just as important as the ants. The two species have a relationship called a mutualism where they both benefit from the relationship of living together. And for the ants part, they cut a lot of substrate for the fungus to grow on. All the ants in a leafcutter ant colony that you see walking around doing daily chores are female ants. There are no males unless they're produced at certain times of the year for reproduction. And you'll see a lot of different sizes of ants. Probably the most noticeable one is the giant soldier ant. And you can recognize them by their size and especially the size of their heads, which are really shiny and, and basically encase so much muscle to power those big jaws. And that's what they use to confront attackers and to defend their colony. In some colonies, the size of the colony can reach up to seven million individuals.